Hi guys, uh, welcome to Investing with JYK, and today we will uh, go through another arbitrage uh, opportunity, and uh, uh, also I'll also show you how to do it basically uh, with interactive brokers. So the companies that we're interested in is uh, First Cobalt and U.S. Cobalt, and so the news was released on March 14th. And then it's quite simple. So basically, each share of US Cobalt is going to be exchanged for 1.5 shares of First Cobalt. Right? And then the approximate um, closing date, excuse me, should be somewhere in here. End of two thousand, uh, end of May. So, according to interactive brokers, I've received a notice that this thing will close by uh, May twenty eighth or something. But doesn't matter. So the the and the other important date is uh, the day of um, shareholder. Uh, let's see where that is. There was a May 17th date somewhere. Let's see. Uh, news. Remember a date of Oh, here we go. So they will close by 28th. And here the meeting of security holder will be held on May 8th, 17th. In fact, I was already asked to vote. Uh, so essentially tomorrow. So that's when the meeting will be held. And then if you want to buy, you got a day basically. Sorry for the... Uh, once the, the meeting closes, uh, the difference will disappear, I assume. So at the moment, um, I made this... thing this spreadsheet this is the line we're interested in so I'm assuming we're gonna do this on OTC uh, you could also do it on the TSB itself but uh, we'll see why that is not as easy so basically the price of FTSSF is 60 cents and US CFF which is US cobalt is uh, 78 cents and if you factor in one share of this guy, is essentially 1.5 shares of this guy. That means this guy is actually worth 90 cents. So USCFF should be worth 90 cents, not 78. So where is, how do we capture that difference? Uh, you can see the actual uh, difference is 12%. So it's fairly, it's fairly significant. And as for, um, well, probably just a single day um, but most likely it's gonna be you know if not for a single day it's, it's gonna be like for half a half a month and um, so the couple of other things that we have to figure out uh, so first of all the trading cost so I did the uh, trading cost calculation here which is automatic so if you want um, you know copy this spreadsheet and you know you can figure that out yourself so you essentially have to do two trades you have to short this so basically you're now borrowing shares and selling FS, uh, FTSSF and for each three shares of this you sell you need to buy two shares of USCFF to offset that and uh, uh, by selling three shares of this, you would be getting one point eight dollars, and by buying two shares of this, you will be paying one point five six dollars. So that difference is your gain. Obviously, you have to pay transaction costs, which is what's shown here. Um, now, there is also a borrowing cost. Whenever you borrow securities, you have to pay a borrowing fee to uh, essentially the broker and the more difficult it is to borrow, 
the uh, higher the borrowing rate is. So how do we check that? Um, a lot of brokers don't allow you to borrow uh, OTC shares, but interactive brokers do. So I have this uh, paper trading account here that uh, I will use to show you. So yeah, so first of all, let's see, you know, FCC, which is the Canadian share, if we try to short this one, um, you know, it's something like 76 cents. Okay, so let's say we're going to just short 300 shares. You will see that currently there is zero shortable shares and there is insufficient FCC for shorting. And um, uh, the fee rate, essentially the, the uh, yearly cost of borrowing these shares would be 13%, so you will pay 13%, but since we're talking about half a month, so you're paying essentially 24th of that, so it will be something like 13.13 divided by 24, you'll be paying 0.5%, so that's not too bad because we're getting 12%, so we, are, we can afford to do that. But since there's no shortable shares, it's kind of annoying. Uh, you can still submit it, submit it, but then you have to kind of guess uh, to see if interactive brokers will be able to find these shares to borrow and, and lend them to you. So what I do is uh, I would just I just shorted FTSSF. Um, so yeah, it has its own disadvantages. So let's say we're gonna do you know zero zero. 0.595, whatever. Oh, by the way, this in interface reminds me of like, holy shit, 90s. Oh, I don't know why this still exists in the current day, but uh, such is life. Anyways, let's say again, we're going to short 300 shares. You can even short 3,000 shares if you want, but it's just a ratio, right? Keep the ratio correct. And submit, you can see, oh, you actually can borrow a shit ton of shares, but the fee rate is much higher, it's 20%. But, again, we're going to only borrow um, for uh, 24th of a year, so 19.63 divided by 24, you're looking at less than 1%, so you're, you're mostly okay. Um, okay, and then... Uh, And, um, you know, here you can like submit and whatnot. And you best do this when the market is open. It's best to do it when the market is open and set the thing, the, the price, slightly lower than the last transaction. Um, maybe just, you know, at the closest bid price. Uh, it will show here once there is actually trading, but at the moment, um, it's this is like, you know, 1 a.m. here, so it's no trading going on. And the other thing that you have to pay attention is uh, the price that Google quotes is uh, only to two decimal places, but uh, the price uh, in here is really to four decimal places, so you have to be uh, careful about that there might be somewhat significant differences, right? Because if you imagine you could do plus minus 0 0.04 and that's close to like 3% or, or uh, like 4 or 5% in, in, in this stuff. So yeah, be very careful on that. Okay, so now last thing to worry about is the margin maintenance. So if you when you short a share, you have to put up uh, collateral as your margin margin maintenance blah, blah, blah. margin maintenance um, uh, collateral. And then interactive brokers has its own way of calculating how much you need to put up. So here is um, how they decide. Okay. So we're gonna do a short position. And what that means, and it says the maintenance margin is going to be 30% of the stock value if it's greater than 
16.67. Our stock value is 0 0.58. Does not apply. Does not apply. Does not apply. Essentially, for each share you short, you need to put in $2.5 um, in collateral. And uh, uh, if you're doing cash, that's how much you're going to be putting in. If you're doing long, um, if you're doing long position, potentially you can use some of that as uh, uh, as the uh, maintenance margin uh, for the short positions. Um, but in our case, we're going to buy U uh, USCFF, which is an OTC share, which is again is a non-marginable, right? So the so it does not provide any additional uh, uh, mar maintenance margin to uh, to this uh, transaction. So that means for if we want to short every share, we need to put in two point five dollars, and uh, within that two point five dollars, we can now do a short. So the actual total cash cost, even though uh, you only buy so many shares, is going to be, let's say, if for 300 shares, uh, it's going to be times 300 plus 200 shares times the price of USCFF, which is uh, 78. So for every 300 shares, you have, you have to put in 906 um, so for every 300 shares of first cobalt, you need to put in 906 dollars uh, in in uh, margin, and maybe you want slightly more because you want it to be above. If the, for the maintenance margin to be above, so maybe like 920 dollars, right? Okay, so let's see how much we can make on if you're only using cash. If you had other shares, then it'll be better for you. But if you're we're talking about only cash, then you will be looking at uh, the difference between those two things, which is uh, blah 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 here. The difference between uh, well, yeah, nine hundred and six hundred. Oh, I think I made a mistake. Let's see. Let me just make sure. Nine hundred times two point. Five. Oh, that was 300. Sorry, 300, 200. Yeah, 9, 9, 920 for 300, 200. Uh, well, let's let's do. Let's stick with the same numbers. It's much easier because this thing automatically does the transaction fee calculation now. So again, okay, 900 times 2.5 plus 600 times 0 0.78, 2,000. So let's say 2,750, right? Is that 750, and uh, that is the uh, money you have to put up, and your gain would be something like this thing here. So I use 20% as borrowing cost, which is fairly close. So I'm just going to use that. Right, so that's going to be your um, uh, difference. So that's 70, 61.2 dollars. Shit, where's my number? Ugh. 62. Um, one, That's how much you will make, 2.2%, um, essentially. And then off, uh, so these already account for the transaction fees and the borrowing cost. So for 14 days, you will be able to capture a 2.2% gain um, based on the current numbers. But if you had other shares, you know, if you had some other position that are marginable, so maybe you can actually um, borrow quite a few uh, first cobalt shares. You have, let's, for a scenario, say you have, um, I'm just gonna do it here. Okay, let me make this bigger. Two hundred. Okay. So imagine if I had something like LGIH. I I have 
you know, say 700 shares of that. And each share is $58. So that makes me have 40,000 uh, dollars uh, in, in, in marginable securities. And then I have, you know, cash of say um, some cash laying around or just two, th you know, let's say again, uh, $2,000. That would mean we can essentially short $1,000 of uh, FTSSF and buy and long $1,000 of um, uh, USCFF. The reason is the margin requirement is being satisfied if you do portfolio margin i think that's required the the margin requirement will be satisfied by the fact that you hold lgih so in that case your return would now be um where's my stuff here 12 percent right so that's much more attractive uh so is that 12 percent and your annualized gain is going to be crazy because it's going to be you know, 12 days or whatnot, 14, 12 days. So yeah, so that's how you do uh, an arbitrage with a, with, a, with a long short arbitrage. Uh, obviously, actually there's still one more thing that I have to make sure that you understand. Try this at your own risk, by the way. I am uh, just sharing how I do this um, for these things especially we're dealing with um, especially when we're dealing with um, these uh, uh, these uh, illiquid um, securities always do the difficult one first Okay, so what does that mean? If you are um, shorting, usually that's more difficult than for, if you're shorting and buying uh, two securities of, of similar market cap, usually that means shorting is more difficult. So you do the short first. As soon as the short worked, then you do the long, right? You sell first, then you buy. And if your purchaser, in the case of, in the previous case, I had AG and PPMF. So AG was much bigger, much more liquid. So what I did was I first tried to buy PPMF with a limit order and always use limit orders on anything below $1 billion. Okay, as otherwise you will get totally screwed. People will take advantage of you for sure. Uh, so I would buy PPPMF first as soon as that uh, transaction went through uh, that trade go through I would then immediately short AG uh, with a market order AG is big enough my market order doesn't make any difference uh, but on PPMF I have to use um, uh, mar uh, limit order and that means it doesn't always uh, it doesn't always immediately uh, uh, the, the, the transaction doesn't always immediately go through sometimes you have to wait like half an hour or something so in the case of FTSSF and USCFF what I do is I first short FTSSF and uh, if once that goes through I will then buy USCFF right, so something to watch out for and last point why am i doing these small cap or in this case micro cap merger arbitrages because it only works for small amounts of capital you can do this at thousands of dollars tens of thousands of dollars even hundreds of thousands of dollars but you cannot do this at millions of dollars. Why? Look at these market caps. For example, this stuff has 6 million market cap. If you put in, this is even in Canadian dollars, okay? So if you put in um, 
you know, one million dollars, this stuff, one sixth of that company would be yours. You you just cannot do it. And for the one that we're talking about, yeah, first Cobalt has a hundred million, but U.S. Cobalt only has fifty six million dollars in market cap. You know, if you, once you you try to buy a million dollar worth of shares, that is two percent of the company. Um, you know, you're gonna move the price, and that will destroy the price difference. That's what you want. So, so this the nice thing about these illiquid shares is they do not play nicely with large amounts of capital. And then, what does that mean? That means the smart people, presumably because of smart, they will get a lot of capital to manage, right? All these. All the money means that they can no longer participate in here. And that means I get to take advantage of these merger arbitrages because I'm much smaller. Once I grow bigger, I would probably grow out of this and will no longer be able to do this profitably. But on the other hand, most people with my amount of capital don't even know about such things, right? So that is the, so this is something I may make a video on. It's, it's always the, it's more philosophical, but it's like trying to define where your advantage is. Like you need an unfair competitive advantage on anything you do. So when I'm doing the arbitrage, I need to find something that's unfair about me that first smart people can't play this game because they have too much money to manage and then people with small amount of money don't care about this or don't know about this or are too dumb to play this game so uh, yeah so 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 you kind of find this Goldilocks situation you find something that will become a Goldilocks situation uh, to to the stuff that you do and uh, Sometimes you can create those Cody lock situations. So yeah, so um, you know, this is this one is somewhat late, uh, but uh, you may still be able to make some money if you traded uh, on on the uh, 16th or 17th. So you got maybe one or two days, depending on when the uh, when this stuff uh, happens. Is it uh, morning or? At the meeting, what well, doesn't say? You know, for was. Oh, 11 a.m. Damn it! Oh well, half a day. You got a one and half a day to play this game, this particular one. But there are so many, so you got plenty of chance. And if you are willing to wait, you can do this guy. This guy has a 22 percent. Um, uh, difference and I won't go over this one I think but I will go over this one this one is super interesting it looks like you're losing money but you may be able to make money because they have some strange earn out thing very fancy so we'll see um, I might make a video on that um, soonish because this thing is closing very soon as well so yeah, um, hopefully this is useful and um, maybe this can make you some money. And um, uh, if you like this, please subscribe, share the channel, uh, click like. If you dislike, click the dislike button. Tell me why you dislike it. Some of you complain that the presentation is shit. I understand. Um, some say that this thing appears completely um, uh, just unprepared it's mostly true it is mostly unprepared it's mostly um, just ad hoc I come I think about a topic I may do some research and then I'll make a video I will not be able for sure I will not be able to do a prepared video every day because I have a day job once I quit my job maybe I'll be able to do that I probably still won't do that. I'll probably find something else to do. So, yeah. See you next time.